guys and welcome to another Photopea tutorial. In this tutorial we are going to create a vintage album cover based on the album cover that you see here. But because I'm a Star Wars guy we're gonna add a little bit of a Star Wars twist. So what are we gonna cover in this tutorial? We will cover the following. The quick select tool, the transform tool, the move tool, the eraser tool, the text tool, the shape tool, the paint bucket tool, as well as creating new layers, renaming those layers, and something you're already familiar with, blending modes. Using these tools and methods, we will create an album that looks like this. So let's get started. So I've downloaded the images that we're going to use on Edsby. I want you to use these images specifically for this first round, and then you can use whatever images you want when you make your home. The one thing I do want to remind you though, is that you must download and use these images. Don't screen cap them. When you screen cap them, they're very, very small, low density images, and when you try to blow them up, they won't show up well on your website, they won't show up well when if you need to blow them up for the purposes of editing. So make sure that you are downloading the images that I provide for you. When you put them on your website, also make absolutely sure that you are not screen capping from your page, but you're actually uploading the image that you save as a JPEG, okay? The first thing I'm going to do is open my image. So I will go to my finder and I will find my images. In my case, I've saved them on my external hard drive. You'll have downloaded them onto your desktop, I assume. And we're going to start with this Beatles album cover. And so we're just going to drag it onto the canvas. Right now, this looks a little bit small. So I am going to enlarge it, holding down Command or Control and the plus sign and that makes it a little bit larger and more easy to manage. Let's start with the text. We are going to use our text tool, which is the big T in your toolbar, and then you're just simply going to come over to your layer and left click, and you'll see this little icon show up right there, and that's showing you that you're ready to type. So we're just going to use the word, write the word meat. Now, it's black text, on a black background and we want to change the color. We want it to be this color, meet the. So the first thing we're going to do is double click on the text so it's all highlighted. Then we're going to go up here to the color box. This box right here at the top tells us what color our font is and right now it's black. But if you click it, it'll bring up our color picker. So let's just move this out of the way because we're going to choose this color right here. And we can grab this exact color simply by putting our little crosshairs on top of the H or somewhere in that color and click. And now it takes us right here and this color here, which is our new color, is roughly the color that's right here. Click OK. And now this text is this color. But we're not done yet because it's the wrong font. And so we double click again, and then we go over here where it says Deja Vu Sans. I'm not sure that this is the default or not. You might have something different, but we're going to look for a font called Bowlby. B-O-W-L-B-Y. So click here on the little arrow, and then these are all the fonts that are built into the program. And I'm going to go up and find Bowlby. Bowlby 1. And we'll click Bowlby 1 says it's loading, it's loaded, and now if we close this, you'll see that we have changed our font down here. Now we can bring this up and place it right over top. Now it's going to look a little bit messy at first because we're kind of laying over, but in the end, we're going to get rid of that back layer. Eventually, it will disappear completely, but we're building on top and this allows us to lay things out and space things properly and make it look the way we want it to look. So we've got meat. Now we're going to create the word the. We simply do this by duplicating the word meat and then changing the text. So command on your Mac or control on your PC, J. And over here, we can see that we have now got a copy of that layer. So let's just drag it out so we can see what we're doing. Go to your text tool, highlight it, and then just type in the. I'm putting on my caps lock just because everything is in caps and we change it to the. Go back to our move tool and now we can bring it up here. Now if we kind of line it up, we can see that our letters don't quite match. 
This E is way over here and our E is way over here. So we're going to grab this. There's three little boxes here. We'll grab the middle box and we will literally just stretch this word out until it's roughly the same size and that's it. We're going to do that with meat as well. So now we will make sure that meat is the active layer and now it's got the box with the three little boxes and we'll drag it out just a touch as well and now we're done. Now we're going to make another text layer because we want to write the word Beatles. We can do that again, just duplicating the text and making the appropriate changes. So Command or Control J, we'll drag it out so that we can see what we're doing. Text tool, highlight, and instead of Beatles, I'm going to write the word Troopers. And then don't forget, we've got an exclamation point here as well. Now it's the wrong color, so we'll do exactly what we did up here before. We're going to highlight the whole thing, go up to our color panel, and now we want to capture this brown kind of color. So you just hover over the brown, click it, and now it has come up on our color picker, and click OK. And our move tool, and let's drag it up, and drag it out. And this time grab the bottom corner, because we're gonna stretch it this way, and this way. Now you might be looking at the letters and think it's a little bit off. I don't think the color is quite right. That's fine. If you want to change that color a little bit, we just highlight the whole thing, go to our color picker again, and maybe it needs to be a little browner, a little darker. Click OK. Ah, it's good enough for what we're doing. Now, you can't see it very well. Of course, it's a little bit sloppy looking, but again, when we get rid of all of the detail behind of our original layer, we can see it's all right there. The next thing we want to do is we'll add this text. The first album by England's Phenomenal Pop Combo. We're going to change the text because we are going to change it to the first album by The Empire's Phenomenal Pop Combo. So we'll create a new text layer. This time we're not all caps because this is not all caps. Now I just typed the first few letters because now we're matching the last thing we did. So I'm going to highlight all of this and I'm gonna go down here again and I'm going to choose a different font. This time we want a font that is small, kind of plain looking, but thin instead of thick like we've seen already. And let's just try Andika. So click Andika, it's loading. Now it's loaded, close our font window. So here's our font size, right now it's 54 pixels. Click the little arrow and there's a little slider and you can just create this slider, slide it, slide it down, slide it down and make it roughly the right size. Now we also have to make it the same color. In this case, it's kind of blackish brown. So we're going to go to our color picker again and we're going to go down here somewhere toward this very dark blackish brown and click okay. Move it up here, then go back to our text and then continue your typing. And we want it to reach from edge to edge, so we'll do this again. We'll just stretch it out, nudge it down a little bit using your arrow keys, and when you're happy, hit OK or Enter. It looks a little bit thin compared to the font that's underneath it, so we can just simply Command J or Control J and we'll just double it up. So now there's two layers that are the same and it looks a little thicker. Okay, our text is now complete. The next thing we want to do is bring in the image that we are going to replace our musicians with. I've provided those for you as well. So we're going to open it up and simply drag it onto your canvas. And now here it is. Now if you notice, the word the shows up because it is beneath this layer. So if you want to get rid of that, it's a bit of a distraction. Just drag your layer up to the top layer. So we want to do a few things, of course. First thing we want to do is get rid of all of this black that's around our image. This can be a little bit tricky. We're going to probably end up with chunks of this side of the helmet missing because this black line goes off and there's no separation between this line and this background. So it could be a little bit tricky. This step takes a little bit of patience. You may have to go back and try it a couple of times. So in order to do this, we're gonna keep it nice and simple. We are going to go over to our object selection and we're going to choose the quick selection button. But first, before we do that, we have to rasterize the object because if you try to do it this way, it'll tell you you must rasterize your object. So we're going to go up to layer and rasterize. So now, once we go over back onto our helmet, 
we can cut it out. Now right away we see this problem. Now this little section over here isn't so bad, but we need this part right here. So we're hopefully we're going to try and fill some of this in without that happening. If that happens, we just simply do it in reverse. Put your little cursor on the outside in the field of black, hold down option and click. And it'll do something like this. Now this isn't too bad. It's a bit tricky right here, but we're going to actually be erasing most of this side of the helmet anyway. So this is fine. Don't worry about it. Now we're just going to hold down Command C or Control C and Command or Control V. And as you can see over here, we have created a layer, this helmet layer. Now we don't need this trooper helmet layer anymore. So we will drag it down to the trash. And here we now have our image cut out. We have to do a couple of things to the helmet first before we're ready to start placing it. So the first thing I want to do is brighten it up a little bit. It looks a little dull compared to the high key lighting that is on the original image. So we're simply going to go to image adjustments, brightness contrast. Let's move this out of the way so that we can see what we're doing. We're going to bring up the brightness a little bit. You can see it's getting brighter. We're going to bring up the contrast. This is just your own personal preference. Just play with these sliders until you find the point that you think is what you're happy with. Okay, now the next thing we want to do is we want to make this helmet much smaller. So we're going to activate our move tool. Transform controls should be checked. If it's not checked, make sure it's checked. And then we're going to make this helmet smaller. Put your cursor on the bottom corner and hold down shift. If you don't hold down shift, you will not be able to control the dimensions of your image. So hold down shift and then it will perfectly control those dimensions. And make it roughly the same size. When you're happy, we just move it and place it. Now, this section, of the helmet needs to be missing, needs to be gone, because as you can see, we only see half of the beetle's faces. So we're going to go to our eraser tool and make sure that our brush is nice and soft. And then we're going to erase roughly half of that helmet. So as you can see, this is why it didn't matter if that one part of the eyeball was not selected, because we're literally erasing. Okay, very simple. Now that we're happy with it, we can transform it if we want to resize it, reposition it, we can do that. I'm gonna resize it, make it just a little bit smaller. Place it right there. Now, I need four of these all together. I don't have to import and do all those changes four different times. I can only do it the one time and then I am going to duplicate the layer. So hold down Command or Control and click J. And then with our Move Tool activated, we simply move it over. Do it again, Command or Control J. Move him over. Once again, Command or Control J and bring him down. Once you've got all four, you can start making your adjustments. John Lennon is a little bit larger, so we'll go down to the John Lennon layer. And you know which one is the John Lennon layer because you can see the little images over here, but you can also rename them. So let's rename our layers. Double click and we'll name it John, enter. This one is George, so we'll double click the next one. Enter. This one is Paul. And this one's Ringo. So we're going to resize John. Just because he was a little bit bigger. And now let's do the same thing with George. Because George was also just a little bit bigger. We can move him over a little bit. It's up to you where you fit these, how you fit these. The next thing we're going to do is we are going to create a black box that will cover up our image. So the first thing we want to do is we want to go all the way back down on our layers panel and activate the background panel. Then we want to create a new layer by going down to the bottom corner, bottom right, and we're at the new layer icon and left click. So now there's a new blank layer. We want to go over here to our shape selection tool and you want it to be the rectangle tool. Now, once your rectangle is ready to go, you'll see these little crosshairs again, but we have to make sure there's one thing very important that we have to make sure of. And that's when we make our square, it's going to be black. And right now I know it's not because our fill color way up here at the top is red. So you'll see this little red box. Click on the little arrow by the red box. You'll see this little panel come up and click black. Just click off your canvas, 
it'll disappear. Now, sort of line up the point of the center of your cross right here, and then you just drag it out to roughly the same place that the box is on the album cover. We're just going to hold it there, and then when you're ready, you simply let go, and now you've got a black box. Okay, we're almost finished. We're going to create a new layer. Make sure it's below the black layer that we just created and we are going to use our fill bucket. Your fill bucket is over here. You might see the gradient tool. Open your menu and click your paint bucket tool. Now we have to make sure that we are in the we have the right color. So we're going to go down here because if we fill right now, it'll be red. So click here and then same thing, we want to capture this kind of creamy color. And now with our fill bucket, we just kind of go anywhere here and click. And now the album underneath here is completely covered. We can make a few little adjustments here and there. So click meat. For example, the meat is in the wrong spot just slightly. We're gonna fix that up. I'm going to stretch it out just a little bit more. That looks a little bit better. The troopers, I'm going to move it actually because it seems to be not quite lined up with the rest of the letters. So now it is. Now we are almost finished. The last thing that we want to do is we want to put some texture. On here so I've also given you this texture I'm also going to grab it myself so go to wherever your texture is and you drag it down onto your canvas you want to make sure that this texture is the very top layer so that it's the only thing that you can see we're going to stretch it out just a little bit now it's okay if it goes off the dimensions of your image just slightly Now the last thing we need to do is change our blending mode. So normal, and we're going to go all the way down to screen. There's one last step. The one thing I forgot to do, you guys, each of these has to be desaturated. We forgot to desaturate. So we should have done it the one time and then duplicated all four. We'll just go back and do it very quickly right now. So this is desaturate. So this is John, image, adjustments, desaturate. George, same thing, image, adjustments, desaturate. Paul, image, adjustments, desaturate, and Ringo. Now we are finished. You've got your album cover. It's all finished. It's ready to go. You could go online and you could find the Capitol Records logo in a PNG file, but that's a small detail I'm not going to ask you to do. If you choose to do something like that, all the better. Now that we're finished, we will simply go to file, export as, and we're going to export it as a JPEG and you can choose the quality. I would go as high as quality as you can because you do want this to show up really nicely on your website. Click save and that's it. That's all there is to it. With Photopea, like I said, this can get a little bit tricky. Please take your time. Once you're finished, you simply meet the rest of the guidelines according to the submission requirements, post it on your website, and then we'll move on to the next step.